It's the Treasury Department versus the big banks. Our government is pushing three of the biggest U.S. banks for doing a subpar job, in its opinion, of course, in allocating funding under the Home Affordable Modification Program. The government's punishment? Withholding money to the banks. Here now are my freedom fighters, Fox Business anchor and my colleague, Chris Cotter, executive director of the Independent Women's Forum, Nicole Neely, and Newsday columnist and Freedom Watch regular, Ellis Hennigan. Ellis, does the government belong in the business of giving banks this money in the first oh, place? Oh, well, well, well. You feeling sorry for the bankers? See, listen, you take our money, you have to follow our rules. I asked you if they belong in the business of giving the money, not if they should have any strings. Somebody's got to do it. I mean, we had a huge economic problem. They needed help, and now they, they don't want to do Nicole, it. Nicole, I have a question. You're, I have a feeling you're laughing at Ellis's answer, not at my question, because you want to give your version of the answer to that question. Uh, no, absolutely not. The government should not be in the business giving this money. And unfortunately for the banks, he who pays the piper calls the tune. So this is you know, they got into this mess, but they shouldn't have been there in the first place. Nobody can feel sorry for these banks, right? I don't feel sorry for the banks because she was right. I mean, they got themselves into this mess by having lower lending standards. And the banks also, by the way, contractually agreed to be a part of this HAMP program, okay. which is terrible to begin with. Now, they may have been coerced or they might have had their arms twisted to become a part of this, but can, they signed on the lot, dotted can line. Can the government decide what is a reasonable mortgage and what are reasonable standards for a mortgage? Or should the no, free market decide I don't that? think the government should decide that, but the banks got themselves into trouble. The banks took the bailout money, even the, and the banks also signed on to this program, which is a terrible I'm program. I'm going to give you this softball. It is Please. the law of the land when the government gives out money with strings. If right. you take the money, you accept the strings. The, strings. Yeah, okay. the Supreme Court has accepted that. Sure. We also know that a lot of the Wall Street crowd are pigs. They just want money. They don't care where it comes from. <laughs> so I'm starting to sound like you. You sound very reasonable. <laughs> Shouldn't judge. the free market regulate this stuff? Why should the government be in the business of well, bailing out anybody? Well, if we could start over, you'd be right. And maybe someday in the future, Sure, you'll be right about it. But now we're in the middle of this morass, and I don't think we can just say, hey, banks, go uh, rape, pillage, and plunder your customers. I don't think we want to say that. Should the banks be in a position, <laughs> Nicole, to decide what the standards for a mortgage are, or should they let federal bureaucrats tell them what the standards for the mortgage are? And remember, the bureaucrats are going to make a political decision, not a business judgment about what's the best way to invest the bank's money. Right. It's, it's in the bank's interest to set their own rates. And, and I quite honestly, of course, I don't trust a bureaucrat to make the right decision. They have never they haven't served us well in the past. I think it's interesting to see that we have created this labyrinth code of regulations and who is paying back who. Not even the bureaucrats know what's going on. So no one can keep these rules straight. This is ridiculous. There's too much government intervention. And it's too confusing. All right. Staying on housing. But here, here's the latest wrinkle in this. Is home ownership a right or a good. Housing advocates are now calling it a civil right. So they reason the government has a constitutional obligation to prop up the prices and give more handouts to make sure people stay in homes that they really can't afford. Chris Cotter, this is utter nonsense. Well, it is it? absolute nonsense. I mean, uh, th this is not a right. It is a privilege. And it's almost like a carrot out there. The American dream, that's the carrot out there. Work hard and get there. You know, I was speaking to a, an industry expert the other day and he said, it looks like lending standards are starting to you know, loosen up a little bit. And I got chills down my spine. Low rates, low cost of home, low cost of houses, and also now you're going to have weaker standards. It sounds like we were, were 10 years ago. Let's see what our house liberal thinks about this one. Surely you don't think that home ownership is guaranteed in the Constitution or by the natural law. Do you, Ellis Hennigan? No. But wow. here, but, hold, but, wow. but it doesn't end there, though. All right, I do ahead. think, no. I mean, the law is pretty clear. You don't have a legal constitutional right to a house. On the other hand, we are decent people, and we do not want our fellow citizens living in homes. We're going to be charitable with other people's millions. money. Is that what well, you're going to give let's me? Let's start with ourselves. But government does have some role in creating things like homeless shelters. You know what? That mortgage subsidy that we all love uh, is a bit of a handout, isn't it? When the government, Nicole, established uh, the, a, a law in the Carter administration, which forced the banks to loan. 10% of their uh, portfolios into neighborhoods and to uh, borrowers who ordinarily wouldn't qualify by the loan standards. That was done because Jimmy Carter thought it would be part of the American dream to give everybody the opportunity to own real estate, except that many of them couldn't afford the real estate, and many of the loans went bust, and the real estate went fallow, and the banks lost money because the government put its ugly finger on the, on the scale. Am I right?
You are right, and I'm just waiting for someone to make the argument that under the Commerce Clause, the government should just require us all to own homes. Wouldn't that just solve this once and for all? No. Maybe that's no. coming next. They can make us eat broccoli. They can make us wear shoes. No. They can make us wear a hat in the sun. They can make us own homes, yes, Alec that's, Ellis. That's not what any reasonable person is saying. But don't right. forget that mortgage deduction that we all love. I mean, isn't that kind of a handout? You want to cancel that? That's the most popular middle class if, if tax deal in America. If you call the mortgage deduction handout, I'll get to you, Chris. If you call the mortgage deduction a handout. Renters don't get it. You are presuming that the government owns our income and it decides how much we can keep rather than we owning our income and decide how much to pay to the government. So it's okay to give these goodies to the middle class folks, but not the... No, you Where does this nonsense come from? You can from. take that, but just reduce right. my personal income tax rate. You can keep the homeowners and, and not yeah. distinguish between, hey, if you own a home, you get a better tax rate than if you don't own a home. Just, right. give, me, just give everybody a lower tax Where rate. Where does this nonsense okay. come from that home ownership is a civil right if even someone as open-minded as dear friend Henneken rejects We've it. lived beyond our means for so long here, Judge, that we see things uh, as a right, whether it's home ownership, whether it's a college education, whether it's two cars and a dog and two and a half kids, whatever the case may be, we see all of these things now as a right of being an American. Isn't it better for some people to rent rather than own, depending upon the, the marketplace and depending upon their income? Yeah, the way housing prices have declined, a lot of rich people are making that Well, right actually, now. renting sure. is a very good deal right, right I, now actually, in New York City. Some days you, you, I was could, you could rent one of those fabulous penthouses and lock it in on a long-term lease and keep it until the market goes up, in right? Fact, in fact, I have an extra bedroom, Judge, if you might be mm. interested. Huh? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> All right, I want to switch, I want to switch gears to, uh, to a third subject uh, before I let my Freedom Fighters go. A meeting that Freedom Watch has its eye on this weekend is the Bilderberg Conference in Switzerland. Their powerful political and economic elites gather to shape world policy. And on this show, we're wondering, if the ideas shared there are so legitimate and so important, then why does this meeting happen behind closed doors and surrounded by snipers, Ellis Hennigan? <laughs> Wouldn't you, the investigative journalist that you are, like to get on the other side yes, of those snipers? Of course, of course. I mean, listen, that's why we need good business reporting like a curse on this network. Great reporters have to go and, and pull the rug out from under the uh, builder windbags. Oh, but the builder windbags won't let any reporters in there, and they are the, the most important movers and shakers outside of the government, many of the government people there are ex-government people in the world. Let's who go. are they and what are they doing I, Who knows? I don't know. They're your rich friends. Listen I don't to know this. who they are. Your, your Honor, <laughs> it, it, these are rich and famous people and they want to be acknowledged as such. So getting invited to Bilderbergs and having it be exclusive, they love having exclusive stuff. They're country clubs and whatnot. That's why they want to go there because, wow, I'm smart and rich and famous and you want me to go? Great. They, they, they want to keep it that way. I'm not scared of what's going on Is there some group that we should here. know what they're doing because they are so influential and when they enter into private or secret or unwritten agreements among themselves as to what they're going to do to influence politics and influence banking. They, in fact, do influence politics and banking on the basis of the agreements made at this hotel in Switzerland, Nicole? Well, possibly, but maybe that's another reason why we just need to shrink the size of government so these people have less influence. Uh, see you at dinner at Boulay. That's what influence. they'll be talking about. Right. This, right? as soon as who, who are they? Who are they? Oh, they're, Henry, they're, they're, they're CEOs, they're, they're former CEOs, they're former, they're former chairs, the former chairs of the Fed. Look, they're David there's Rockefeller. There's a few heads there's... of royal families. Well, yeah, okay, there might be good ideas that come out of this. Why not share knowledge? Okay. Why not build relationships <laughs> that at some point in time might be able to help you? Hang on, Nicole. The Queen of Spain, John D. Rockefeller, Google CEO Eric Schmidt, former United States President, which one will be there? Bill Clinton, Ben Bernanke, Tim Geithner, the former chairs of the, of the Federal Reserve. Are you worried about what agreements they might uh, uh, enter into at Bilderberg? I think it's funny that this is presented as this big capitalist controversy because I don't, to me, these people aren't capitalists. So, yes, I am worried what they will do. But again, I just, I think, A, transparency is good. And then, B, we just need to give them less influence. Transparency good with this crowd. Sure. Would you really like to be there and know what's going on? Yeah, the only yeah. way I'm going to get there is if I get a day rate with the catering staff. All right, well, put that aside. Put that <laughs> aside. You are a serious, although self-effacing, investigative journalist whom we love to yes. have here. I would bring I would, a tape recorder if I was right, on the we catering would love, staff. We would also love to have you there. What do you think they're talking about? What do you think they, they want to accomplish by their secret well, meetings of high-powered people. I mean, there are a lot of serious issues in terms of free trade, in terms of monetary policy. I mean, there's good stuff for them to talk about. But listen, I'm a reporter, first and foremost. Yeah, I like to be sneaking in the room, of course. But just for that reason, I mean, if, if any of these, these ideas 
these dangerous ideas right. uh, that, that are brought back to the United States that want to be put into law. As soon as they're mentioned on the floor of the House or the Senate, we're all going to know about them and we're all going to be up in arms about them. All right. Well, it's not that dangerous. It's just a think tank. Suppose Google and the Federal <laughs> Reserve and the Treasury Department and Bill Clinton decide that housing is a civil right and they come back to the United States and start fomenting that idea all over the place. Is it good that we don't know what they're doing or is it bad that we don't know what they're doing, Nicole? Why are you guys laughing at that? It's a legitimate question. Go ahead, no, Nicole. It's, it's terrible and it's nefarious, but that's why we have a tripartite system of government, you know, for checks and balances so that these stupid ideas can't make it, you yes. know, can't see the light yeah. of day. That's Robert. why we have the judge here to yell, it's unconstitutional <laughs> every well, day. No, unconstitutional. So when somebody comes up with that idea, you would say, look, and, and to Nicole's point, we have checks and balances in place. All right. Ellis, I'll give you the last word. Big guys like secrets. It has ever been thus and shall ever be. That's, that's okay. True. Nicole Neely, Chris <laughs> Cotter, Ellis Hennigan, ever self-effacing. It's always a pleasure to have you here. Thank you, guys. Back with watching.